Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Maker's Muse. It's a lovely rainy day here in Sydney, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a review and a teardown on the 3D printing pen. So, these are coming out of China. These aren't the three doodler, they're actually a Chinese knockoff. And they've been available for, um, they've been around for a fair while now. They're available for Christmas 2013. So, I got my hands on some, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a bit of a review, show you how they work, um, what's good about them, what's bad about them, why you should and shouldn't buy them. So, basically, they're produced by a company called Yaya in China, and um, the first version didn't have a logo on them, but they've changed that to add a logo. They've also upped the power supply to a 3 amp uh, beast, in my opinion, uh, since the previous version, which was a much smaller power supply. They run on a low voltage DC, so it's about 12 volts going into it, and I think it gets broken down to something like 5 volts inside. So these pens pretty much work like a normal extruder in your regular 3D printer. They're just handheld. So the filament goes in through the top, gets drawn down through a little uh, feeder gear, and then out the hot end at the bottom. They're exactly the same as a normal 3D printer. But they're handheld, so it lets you do crazy things like this, you can actually draw in 3D. If you have enough patience, and I'll get to that in a minute. So, how do they work? Okay, so with your 3D printing pen, you need to plug in the jack at the back, once it's plugged into the wall, and the red light turns on, which means it's heating up. So, the first thing you'll notice with a 3D printing pen is it turns on as soon as you plug the power in. There's no on and off switch on the pen itself. So, if you leave that plugged into the power, um, it's just going to keep keep heating the pen. So don't forget about these, um, that's one of the possible dangerous points of this. The circuitry inside is really quite simple and it won't turn off by itself. So that's heating up. Um, the power supply itself is of questionable quality, it weighs nothing. Um, I haven't ripped one of them apart yet but I'm quite scared to do that. I think it's going to be full of pretty dodgy components and bad circuitry but whatever it does still power up. So blue means it's heated up. So, it has a forward and back button. Back reverses the filament out, and forward, of course, extrudes it forwards. Um, so the first thing you'll notice once you start extruding, I'm holding down the extrude button now, is how slow it is. It's absolutely painfully slow. It does actually have a slower setting as well, this little slider switch at the back, and that's the power supply going. So you're always connected to power, it's a real pain. So the slider switch can actually make it go slower, but there's no faster speed than that. That's the fastest speed you'll go. So the way it works, I find a bit of uh, paper works well. You sort of squish the first layer down and then start moving across or up or something like that. Then you can sort of hold it in place and let it cool and pull it away. Um, It doesn't stick very well. But, what I'm already noticing, I don't know if you can hear that over the rain, I'm not pressing any buttons, it's just hissing out. Um, so this is Libina ABS filament, it's pure ABS. Um, and it's just bubbling out, it's not actually, if I extrude it forwards, um, let's see how it goes. And it's still bubbling. And it's quite a cold day today as well. No, so it, I, even if I could draw something with this, it's coming out with bubbles. I'm gonna swatch, um, switch to a different filament. Oh, so I'll show you how slow it is to withdraw filament. Um, I'm pressing the back button, and I actually get a pen to draw this for you. You can see how slow it is. So, I'll draw a line on it. So that's the line that I'm, I'm withdrawing. That's withdrawing. That's how slow these things are. It's painful. That's going to go all the way out. So, every video that has these, they actually did a similar crowdfunding thing um, in China that the Three Doodler did. 
Three Doodle and this, they both sped up the videos by a massive, enormous amount to make it look like, oh, you're drawing stuff really quickly. But really, to draw something like this takes about 10 minutes or something. It's just a joke. So, still withdrawing, still withdrawing. Getting bored. There we go. And out it comes. So I'm just going to change to a different filament. So, just got to get rid of the uh, the yellow. It's slowly changing over. So when it first goes through, it doesn't pop, which is good. But I think maybe the temperature starts overcompensating. But actually, that's coming out quite nice. Okay. So let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna try drawing my name. I think another problem is this table is aluminium, so it's really cold, even through the paper it's not sticking. Anyway, there's an A. It's an N. It's the fastest, fast as it goes. N. Let's do a G. Mm. This is so much fun. Not really. Yeah, that's my word. That's my name. Join letters up with a little underline. And that's what I did in that time, and pop it up, and then you can sort of give it a stand or whatever. So you can join parts together, which is pretty cool. It's like a little plastic welder. That's pretty neat. But it's just it's just too slow, too slow for my liking. Anyway. Let's see how they look inside. Alrighty, here we have the guts of the Yaya 3D printing pen. Um, so it's actually quite interesting the way they've approached this. Obviously, budget is a massive part of it. The moulding detail inside is just shocking, to be honest. Um, they haven't cleaned up any of the mould in areas that you can't see, which is fair enough, but I actually got excited at one point because this little cover um, for the extruder motor I thought it was 3D printed but actually no it's not it's um, just really really poor um, machining on the mould but anyway so what parts have they got? they've got actually a little geared stepper motor so that probably explains why these things are so slow it's a tiny stepper motor that's been geared down probably 164 or something high like that and turning this um, this little knurled wheel here um, so it pulls the filament in through here, past these, um, past the electronics, and then through here into this tube. So the problem that has been happening with these is kids have been using them, and then they've been using them to the point where the filament gets all the way through and runs out here, and then stops extruding because it's past the extruder, but it can't withdraw it because it's no longer got um, any traction on it. And to clear that out, you have to pull the whole thing apart. And actually, this one is particularly stuffed because you can actually sort of see this um, pink colour. It's actually all the way in there. So the only way I could get that out, if I could be bothered, is to heat this up with it all exposed and shove something through here to keep it going. Um, and that's just a joke, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, moving on, the electronics. It's probably some sort of standard fare. It's got just a simple... Um, uh, temperature loop to control the the hot end. Um, it's actually quite funny, they've actually sanded off the chips, which is, I find just um, really comical because they've copied this from the three doodler. So this is a copy, but they're protecting their copy. 
Um, they're actually doing a really crap job at sanding it, but it's got some sort of AVR, some sort of Atmel chip, and um, one can't really read it. One one zero eight D six. Don't actually know what that is. Oh well, they've sanded both of them, so obviously it's worth protecting. And um, interesting is everything's modular. So, you can unplug things, which is cool. Um, and with a hot end, they do have decent insulation. So, they've got some fiberglass, um, some fiber tape, a bit of captain around there to keep it all, keep it all safe. Um, so, let's just pull this out. Once you have the cover off, it all just sort of flops out everywhere. So that's the extruder, you know, with a little gear. Um, they've kept the bearing in place with a little bit of rubber hose. <laughs> Quality. Um, <laughs> that's the most adorable fan I think I've ever seen. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's maybe about one and a half centimeters across. Um, actually, these pens are really quiet when they're on, so I wonder if this fan even turns on. Maybe only once it starts to get hot, or the stepper gets hot. Um, but that's absolute. I've never actually seen a fan that small, so that's quite cute. Held in with um, super secure hot glue, by the looks of it. Um, and I'm not keen to unwrap this at this stage, but it's probably like any other standard um, extruder fare, where it's got a uh, resistor creating the, the, temp the, um, the heat and a thermistor regulating it. So it's like a really cheap um, take on a 3D printing extruder like with really cheap components. This, this has probably only got about $10 worth of crap in it and these sell for about $150 so yeah someone's making a lot of money. So there you have it, that's the 3D printing pen. Um, so unfortunately I can't really recommend these um, in their current state anyway. I'm sure future versions will be much faster um, the temperature will be much more precise, maybe you'll even be able to um, adjust the temperature. But in their current state, um, yeah, they make fumes, the ABS bubbles and spits. Um, they're dangerous because you leave them plugged in, they'll just stay heating up. And the, that even that could be excusable, but the fact is, if the filament runs all the way through, and you don't catch it in time, in which case, if a kid's using it, it'll always happen, um, you have to rip the whole thing apart to get it out. So completely non, um, non kid friendly, not to mention the hot point, like you can't give this to a kid when it's 260 degrees at that tip, that's just ridiculous. So yeah, cute little novelty, um, but yeah, not worth it. But having said that, now I have these things, um, yeah, I'm going to do what I love doing with things and hacking the crap out of them. So I'm going to look at making these battery powered, so remove this. I'm going to look at ramping up their speed, because they're ridiculously slow. I'm going to also look at turning the temperature down a bit, so they stop spitting and bubbling. And I'm going to look at a few other mods, possibly running PLA through it instead of ABS, because PLA, the fumes are actually quite pleasant, they're sweet, whereas ABS stinks. So, yeah, um, look forward to a, a future video where I do those mods, and I'll show you how they work. See you guys later.